All right. Well, welcome to our webinar, The Business of Coaching. Uh, my name is Sandra Mall. I'm the Program Advisor here at Coaching Out of the Box, and I will be your host for today's webinar. The reason for today is for you to walk away with value and understanding um, and learning about our topic of the business of coaching, um, as well as to get to know us a little bit more here at Coaching Out of the Box. So as pr program advisor here, sorry, this slide, there we go. Um, I speak and communicate with people every day um, who are wanting to learn more about the programs that we offer. And I'm very happy to connect with each and every one of you. Um, a heads up that our chat is open. So please feel free to leave any comments or questions that you may have as they arise into our chat window. Once the webinar is complete, we will be sending out a follow-up email that will include the slides as well as the recording link um, and any other resources that we mentioned in this webinar for you. So I would like to introduce to you all the wonderful Rosa. Um, she's one of, one of our wonderful coach facilitators here at Coaching Out of the Box and also is the principal and leadership coach for Fiamma Coaching and Consulting. Rosa has extensive experience working with individuals and teams across a wide range of sectors and is passionate about supporting people to reach their goals and create the career and life that they desire. So Rosa, would you like to pop on and say hi? Hi, um, thank you all for joining us. I will repeat that from Sandra. I will also repeat, you know what? We wanna make this as valuable and as relevant as possible. So use the chat, throw it in, throw your questions in. Um, the three of us, Jimmy, Allison in a second, um, will be you know, answering going forward. Um, I just love being here because this is the part about moving from that coaching space while you're still in it to being, okay, so what happens? How do I, how do I organize myself and, and move forward with the business? So I'm just happy to be here. And we are so happy to have you. And I would also like to introduce you all to Alison Andren, our CEO and founder here at Coaching Out of the Box. Um, Alison is a passionate advocate for coaching. Um, anybody that's had any experience with, with Alison will know that. Um, as a master certified coach, one of only a thousand globally, um, she brings 20 years of coaching experience as an executive coach and a coaching educator, having worked with leaders, CEOs, managers, professionals, as well as being charter faculty for the University of Texas Executive Coaching Program and the Director of Training for Royal Roads University. Her focus now is supporting individuals and organizations in developing coaching capacity through Coaching Out of the Box's proven programs. Now, Allison, over to you. All right. All right. And I need to stop my, uh, start my video, don't I? <laughs> that you do. You see me? <laughs> Hello. Welcome, everybody, to this webinar. And um, I, uh, I, love, I, I love this webinar in particular because I've been there, done that a lot over a number of years, and I, I, I hope that it will be of value, value to all of you. What we are about at Coaching Out of the Box is about getting these such so power, so incredibly powerful skills into the hands of as many people as possible, either for leaders and managers and, and, and that group, and or as a continuation for those people who want to become ICF accredited coaches as well, and really have a good, solid grounding in coaching from which they can springboard in organizations that they bring coaching to in their own businesses and so on. And um, you know that our vision and mission is what if everyone had coaching skills and our, our, our vision is that they will and our mission is to see that they do. And we're on our way. We have maybe now well over, well over 20,000 people who have learned coaching skills to varying levels, some deep, some um, to use as leaders. And um, I want to just say that key findings that came out of work we've done with a, a very large organization and we presented to Harvard just to inspire you because this is what you do whether you're coaching individuals, whether you're coaching leaders, whether you're, you're coaching teams, whether you yourself are taking coaching education. What if, what if 
who had improved listening, improved ability to give feedback, improved communication, improvement in team communication and team dynamics, improved conflict resolution, positively impacted relationships. And this one, I just love this one, increased ability to engage in conversations that are solutions focused and promote accountability. Now that is a value and what you do of a, is a value when you're doing that. That's what everyone needs. All right, so onwards. We need you to unmute, Sandra. For somebody that's pretty techy, you know what happens every once in a while. Um, our objectives for today, aside from asking for a little bit of grace when things come up, um, is to discuss the need for coaching, coach credentialing, what clients want, and also strategies for success. So out of this, our intention is that you will have a better idea of whether this is right for you, your next steps, and also to have an understanding of what it takes. Again, we'll be monitoring the chat, so please feel free as they arise to pop any comments or questions that you have in the chat. I'm gonna launch a quick poll just so we can get to know you all a little bit better. And please feel free to select any of the options that do apply to you. Um, so we just wanna know a little bit more. We wanna know if you're a credential coach. Have you used a coach? Have you taken coach training programs? Are you wanting to gain an ICF credential? And do you currently have your own coaching business? So we'll just let this go just for a couple minutes here. And I can see everybody voting and that is fantastic. We appreciate it. Thank you. Perfect. I'm just going to give it about 10 more seconds. And then I'll share all these results with you. Okay, so I'm going to end the poll and I'm going to share the results. And what strikes me, 94 of you have, or 94% of you have taken coach training programs and 88% of you have used a coach. Um, so that is quite fascinating. And we are going to move on unless Rosa and Allison would like to discuss any of the polling results. Well, this is, um, this is very, very helpful and uh, to know that because that's, that is so exciting to see this. And you know, another key thing that I'm seeing here is that 88% have used a coach and here's the thing, more and more people are wanting to take advantage of using a coach, whether they're in organizations or they are individually wanting to strengthen themselves. And that's where well-trained, well-credentialed coaches come in. That's the opportunity. The, the reason, the fundamental reason why, and um, there is a slide to move to, uh, Sandra, I think, maybe? Yes, good. The fundamental reason why that is, is change, the speed and the pace of change that is going on right now. And you can see this in the slide. We need, we need all hands on deck out there. And what I'm seeing, and remember, I've been in coaching for quite some time and have watched the growth of coaching, the growth of the demand for coaching out there in the marketplace. And what we're seeing is more and more organization. It was like dribs and drabs and then bits by bits by bits by bits. They are recognizing, oh my goodness, we need to equip our people in coaching skills, whether or not we provide some of that training to our leaders and managers, et cetera, whether we bring in external coaches uh, to support what's going on out there because of the rapid pace of change. I was speaking um, a while ago to a, a large organization, and they, in this case, it was around 200 people who were attending it. And I asked them in the past three days, I was there on a Thursday, so it was the past three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, how many of you have come up upon a situation that you've never dealt with before? 80% and well, I have to say I, when I gazed out, it looked like a, about 80% raised their hands. 
we are getting into so much more complicated territory, so many more systems, so many more technology, so many so many external forces that and internal forces that are at play that we need the brilliance of everyone. And you as coaches, internally or externally, you need to be brought in or internally working to support that coming out of everyone. We can no longer just buy on a piece. I think that's pretty obvious. Now, and they're just conducting another one, but these findings came out of the ICF Global Coaching Study. The benchmark was 2007. They did another one in 2012. They did another one in 2016. And there's another one that they're just uh, working on right now. So I can't wait to get those results. But anyway, the average income, someone who was um, a coach in, uh, as of 2016, was 61,900 U.S. Globally, globally, when they took in all the other countries, and I should even stop uh, show my face as well. I suddenly realized I wasn't doing that. And globally, and globally, they had uh, the average was fifty-one thousand U.S. dollars. The global total revenue that came from uh, paying for coaching one way or another was two point three five six billion dollars U.S which was up over 19% from 2011. So, you know, I can't wait to see what it's going to say now, but I can guarantee you, based on what I'm experiencing with what Coaching Out of the Box is experiencing, is you will see it even higher than that. 75% of the, the, the uh, respondents who answered to that survey, they said, that they expected it to increase. So that's kind of setting the stage uh, for, for what's going on out there in the demand. So I'm going to let Rosa carry on here and uh, speak to all of these things. Thanks, Allison. Um, I honestly, I just, I love hearing Allison because I take her passion for coaching um, and it kind of, you know, hold it. Um, so as we did the, the poll, 31% uh, of you said, you know what, already credentialed. So a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talk about is, you know, maybe your experience and I'm, I welcome, you know, you to put that into the chat. If there's anything else um, as I go forward and ask or answer the question, why hold a credential? 60% of you said, you know what, I, I want to get one. And so there's that recognition that there is some value. There is, there's a value to it. And so um, when it comes to a credential, I think we can say, and it's like the value of it will fall into almost one of three groups. Um, that first place is that credibility group. That place of, you know, when we talk about credential here, we talk about the International Coach Federation credential, given that it's the leading organization to further the coaching um, profession in the, in the world. And Alison alluded to um, the, you know, the studies that the ICF does. And in their global awareness study in 2017, when they asked the question of those who use coaching, do you want, you know, how important is it for your coach to hold a credential? And 83% of people said it's really important because they see this credibility. They see a legitimacy of, you know, um, someone has gone through and, and done some training. Um, they understand the, the theory behind coaching, what coaching is, how it's different, um, how to use it, what to do. Um, they have a, go, a code of ethics in the ICF. So they're, again, that standard is just starting to be, is just being set and being um, communicated by having that credential, by holding that credential. Also that holding a credential and, and continuing to have a credential, there's that continuing to sharpen your saw, if you want to talk about Covey and, and adding the, um, you know, the continuing education. So making yourself better. That's an element to the credential. That's an, and it's a requirement to continue your credentials. So there's this credibility, there's this legitimacy to it, um, to having this credential. Again, whatever credential, um, ACC, PCC, MCC, the three credentials in the ICF. Um, having worked as both an internal coach, someone who works in a large organization who provides leadership coaching, and also 
oh, uh, having a company that contracts two organizations. As Allison talks about organizations becoming more savvy, more, more aware of the value of coaching. A lot of them are also starting to see the credential as a marker for um, you know, that credibility that we want someone at that level to have a credential in order to provide coaching to our, our leaders um, or to our, you know, aspiring leaders or whatever in the organization. Um, the second thing for me I know a, a credential does is the differentiation with this explosion. I do want to call it an explosion over the past couple of decades of those um, in the coaching profession saying I'm a coach. Uh, what I found, um, what you know, studies have found is that having a credential also differentiates you from all of the other, you know, who say they're coaches. It allows, again, um, Sandra talked about MCC, there's only a thousand. There are, you know, if you want to think about all the people saying that they are providing coaching, about 13,000 globally um, are at that first ACC level, the Associate uh, Credentialed Coach. About 9,000 are at the Professional Credentialed Coach, and then that, you know, around 1,000 are at that Master Credentialed Coach. That tells you of the pool of coaches, having a credential then, you know, makes that pool a bit smaller and it differentiates you from others who are saying they're coaches. And when you have a business, when you're saying, hey, I'm putting my shingle out as a coach and here's my business and here's what I offer and here's my unique selling point, um, that differentiation is crucial to say how, you know, why hire me or hire my company um, as opposed to someone else. So that having that credential adds to that differentiation. It's one of those other unique things that you have. The third is more for me, and I think I will speak for myself, and I know others will say, I've heard others say the same, having a credential also gives confidence to me. Um, you know, when in those places where it's like, can I really do this? And, and especially as you start out and you're going forward, then you are able to look at saying, I've gone through and I've met all of the criteria for a credential. I can do this. Um, so that gives you that confidence as well. Um, and, uh, you know, going forward, I, Allison, I don't, I think I've, I've hit everything. I know that uh, sometimes I channel even your experiences, but is there anything that I, in terms of the credential piece, I know, again, 60% or over 60% of the group is saying, that's important to me. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, about the importance or how we see the importance? Well, and thanks for asking, Rosa. Here's the deal. You want to make it easy as possible for people to hire you, whether you're, as, as Rosa's mentioning, whether you're internal, external, or maybe a bit of both. Make it easy. Don't put any barriers uh, in the way. Make it super easy for them to go, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to work with this coach. I think that's the one thing I would add to that part of our webinar. I love that. Um, again, as business owners, uh, you know, you know, 44% of you said, yeah, I have you, your own coaching business. That's part of that, that mindset of, you know, make it easy. People want to hire you um, to not only again, thrive in the business, but also add that value for those of you who've been in coaching, who've been in a coaching conversation to just spread that value and say, how do we call those conversations and continue them? So we'll move on to the next slide, which talks about what clients want. When we're talking about making it easy for people to hire you, um, you know, I, when we talk about, you know, what do they want? They want results. They want some, a, a, someone to help them, a, a partner, a thinking partner to help them move from this, place that Allison describes of constant change and pressure and, you know, finite resources and all of the things that um, people are facing and to create that space for to help them move and get results that they're hoping for, especially when, you know, if anyone has been in that space where, you know, they're in a, they're in a spot where they can't see moving forward, having that thinking partner is someone, um, is something they really, really value, um, who will challenge them, who'll create that space, ask those questions. Um, when it comes to background, you know, people will read this saying, well, I'm not the expert. That's not what coaching is. Um, and having a background, having a background in healthcare or tech or, you know, People are looking, or even in leadership, to say, I've, you know, been this leader. People are looking to you to say, well, 
as a coach, you're not going to give me advice. You understand at a different level. You understand the nuance of maybe what I'm going through. Um, so when we talk about strategies, um, it's uh, how do you look at your background? How do you look at those strengths and say, how do I put them front and center? Um, so that people will look at it and say, okay, you know what, this person may understand the context and still stay in that coaching space where they're not going to give me the answers. Um, education, again, you know, what, what gives that right, but it's also this, there's so many wonderful deep level skills. There's some skills that in coaching that someone says, well, I know how to communicate, I know how to listen. And then going through that education deepens that, saying, really, do you ha know how? And so bringing that um, to a client, they're saying, I want someone who knows how to do this, who isn't just, you know, having a wonderful conversation is also just helping me. We talk about that moving forward, the mobilizing piece of taking, helping me move from where I am to where I want to go. Um, referrals, as much as I, we talk about not keeping you a secret, I can tell you all about how wonderful it is to work with me. Um, having those referrals, having other people tell, you know, share that their stories of how coaching with, and working with you has impacted them goes a long way. And sometimes clients are looking for, that's nice. Who else can tell me that it's, it's you know, their, the value and the impact? Um, we talk about, as we talk about the strategies, we talk about how do you gain those? How do you get them? How do you use those referrals? And I talk about this in the conversation. Coaching is all about moving forward. It's about having those, you know, conversations that move you from where you are to where you want to go. So having that, that energy, that person with them to help them mobilize, to take action. Um, I am also curious, again, as we go through this, some of you have been coaching and may have additional things of saying, you know what, you know what else clients want? And I invite you to throw those into the chat and we'll read them out and share that with each other. Um, if you've had anything else with that, um, any other additions. So with that, as we start talking about the strategies, the how um, in that coaching business, I'll throw it over to Allison to start us off and then I will do some digging into the actual strategies. Okay. Uh, thanks, Rosa. Yeah, what's going to be your smart way of getting there? And Rosa's going to speak to some specific strategies, but I want to just share a little bit here. I was scared to death when I first got into coaching. I thought, nobody's going to, who am I to, to be able to do this? And I did have a background. I had a life. I had sagas that I had gone through, issues, challenges, all kinds of things that had happened. But I personally found it um, extremely stressful initially to find clients and get going. And so in the strategies that Rosa is going to talk about, and it's funny, I was just literally a little over an hour or so ago speaking to a group of coaches and this would have, I can't even imagine I was doing this, but in, in Saudi Arabia, for example, and they were wanting to know this. And one of the things I did say, which we don't specifically mention, but is a kind of the overriding thing, is you've got to be prepared to take some risks here and grow, grow yourself. When I got started, I could never in a million years have imagined what happened to me in this, in this coaching arena. And I'm just going to share it a little bit because I think it's important. I, didn't, I was the sole breadwinner of my family. I did not have anybody else earning money, and I couldn't afford to, you know, sort of lollygag around. Not that that's not, hey, great if you can. Great if you can. But I wanted to get this happening. I took the training. I then uh, partially started to get clients free, honestly. And I was told by a few, oh, you, what are you doing? That's, that's not going to work. Those people were like gold. Those first five people that I worked with were like gold. Some of you may be already doing this. They provide referrals. They provided referrals, references, and I got, I got um, media attention too. So I, I just want to say, be prepared to step out, step up, grow yourself as you move through this. And uh, 
be willing uh, be willing to do the growth steps that you need to make this happen uh, because that's kind of underneath all of this and and I think that it's it's really important to recognize this and for me uh, sometime later and because as I was moving through it I had no um, I had no benchmarks, I had no role models, I had, I had uh, well, a, a few, but I had no real clarity around what the heck was I doing. And so now, today, we've got much more out there about that, and, and Rose was going to uh, speak to some of that in a few moments as well. I wished I'd had some of that, but the one thing that I, I know you're going to need is the ability to take risks and, and also courage to, to step out and, uh, you know, support moving forward. And so now I'm going to let Rosa jump into the strategies. And I'm like back and forth with that too, but go ahead. <laughs> um, Allison, I, I, I love what you had said there. Um, and I think that what's interesting as someone who is a coach and then moves into a, you know, someone who says, I, I want a coaching business um, is that we then have to challenge ourselves the way we challenge our clients. And it's step outside your step outside your comfort zone, potentially grow in order to get to where you want to go. And sometimes that's hard. Uh, and it does. It gives you an interesting perspective of also sitting in the chair of the people that we we get to work with of saying, you know, this is what we how we support them to move forward. Um, so we'll talk about each of these. I'll talk about each of these in a bit more depth as we move forward. Um, but we talk about that invest in education, that piece of how do you, again, I'll kind of go back to the, one of my favorite sayings with Covey of sharpen your saw. How do you make sure you have the capacity and the competencies and the ability and the, to challenge yourself on what you know, how you, again, listening, asking questions, you know, being so investing in that education, leveraging your strengths, um, you know, looking at what you do well and how do you leverage that in any business, including this coaching business, uh, give yourself time, don't be a secret. We talk about practice, 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 um, how to leverage or capitalize in your current position and get a coach and experiment. As we go through these strategies, as we go through the strategies that we've created of, to help you, I would ask that you keep these three questions in mind of what would be absolutely ideal for you. As you go through, you know your situation. Again, you are the expert in your life. Uh, you know your situation. Which of these would be that ideal uh, for you as you go through of saying, okay, here is where I'm going to focus. Here's, here's this. Who would your ideal client or coachee be? And some of us are saying, well, we'd like to serve the world. And part of that, you know, business plan is how do you differentiate yourself? Who do you want to serve? Where is that flow for you of um, not saying it's, it's exclusive, but where is that flow for you? As you go through these, I, I challenge you to ask yourself that question. And then how will you know you're successful? What does success mean to you as a business owner, as someone who wants to, um, you know, hung up their shingle and say, I have a coaching practice? What does that mean to you? So um, we will start with our first strategy. And as we go through, I also invite those, if you have questions to say, hey, what do you mean by, or those who have been um, and currently have a coaching business, um, to add more um, to some of these strategies, add a, a, you know, some of that richness to it. So Sandra, I will ask you to advance the slide and we'll talk about experimentation and getting a coach. Um, that experimentation is, Allison talks about taking risks she didn't say reckless. There's that difference there that people, you know, I want you to separate. Taking risks is that let's try, let's experiment, let's see what works for me, let's see what works with the client. Um, you know, if you're in an organization now, experiment with, you know, people that you're working with to say, does this work? Does a, you know, does a lunch and learn work? Does, you know, a group coach work? Does a triad work? Those sort of things do two things. One, they allow you to stretch yourself to say, Ooh, let me try this in a safer place. Again, you know, it's safe, um, but just try it to say, does this fit? Does this add value for the clients that I want? Is this comfortable for me? Um, it also, if you're working in an organization or if you have your own company now and you're saying, I want to expand it, gets your name out there. Your name, you're working with more people, experimenting, trying different things. People are like, hmm, you know what? Her name's out there. Again, like, you know, Allison said, getting media attention, becoming a thought leader. 
The other is get a coach, get a coach, get a coach. <laughs> if there is, you know, you've said, many of you have said you've used a coach, you understand the value of it. As someone who professes to say, here's the value, clients, work with us. Um, there's also something in that for yourself to say, how do I make sure that I have that thinking partner, that I have that safe space to experiment and think and, and work through my own business challenges, my own growth as a coach challenges, get a coach. Um, several of us or many of us have more than one or we've worked with different coaches at different points in our, in our career. So I would advise you to get a coach because um, <laughs> there's always that, that fun place in my mind if you work with a client and they ask you, so do you have a coach? And you say, no, why not? Um, so <laughs> um, yeah, we'll get to that ACTP training. Absolutely, Marion. I think that's a, Marion's talking about completing the ACTP training um, or a, kind of a training program to get that education. We'll talk about that. Um, so we'll move on. <sighs> Don't be a secret. That's the biggest strategy here. Um, you know, there is, there is a space and this is kind of, for me, this was that space of the biggest growth when I decided to say, okay, you know what, I'm doing this. This is, you know, I have a, my coaching practice, I'm doing this and I have to talk about how I do this. And I have to talk about me as a coach and as a business owner, that's part of your role and that will challenge you. Um, maybe challenge some of those gremlins that come up of like, who am I to be doing this? One of the wonderful things though, it is also going through that process. You get really clear on what is it the value that you bring? And you know, um, what is it gonna take for people to know you and getting comfortable with that? Um, because if nobody knows you exist and no one knows the value you bring and no one knows what makes you unique, no one's going to call you and say, hey, can you support me? And hey, can you help me? Um, so I'll move on to some of those bigger ones. I talk about, we talk about this capitalization. This is about leveraging um, and capitalizing where you are. Starting where you are. You might say, hey, Rosa, I want to be here in five years or three years or one year. This is about where, what's happening around you now? Are you in an organization now? Are you working in an organization, either coaching or not? How do you, how do you use where you are now to capitalize, to, um, you know, try different things when we talk about the trying place. Um, start putting out feelers, start get, letting people know that you're coaching, start trying and having other people feel what it is to be, you know, to be in that coaching space, to see the impact of coaching. Um, even in this case, it's like, if you have an education background, become a coach educator. This is, for me, this one was a really crucial one because I both had an internal coach, I was an internal coach in a large organization and had a business on the side. Um, so I had a job job, as Allison calls it, which I love. And um, I was able to use things in my private practice that lent itself to an organization. I could try things that impacted them. It also, I got to try things in an organization where, you know, try different tools or try different methods or, or um, and I'm able to now like use that in my own practice. So this is about look around from where you are. Um, what are you currently doing that you can leverage as you move forward to have your own business? Um, or open your coaching practice, grow your coaching practice as 41, 44% of you said you have one. I want to just pause here and ask Allison. I know that, you know, we've gone through a couple of slides. We have a few more. In your experience or what you've seen, what else, um, what did I miss or what else did I, did I not highlight or underline? Well, it's, you know, you've got to take this, uh, you've got to really be prepared to invest one way or another um, and create a, a presentation that you can provide to a client, create a presentation that you can give to an organization. Um, I, I have seen this work really well. Become an advocate, a self-appointed in some cases, advocate within your organization for coaching. I had a conversation with uh, a woman a while ago, and she was saying, well, how am I going to 
how am I, how am I going to get this going on in my organization? I said, become an advocate. Hold lunch and learns, for example. Go and on top of your own volition. In other words, don't wait for them to come to you. You go to them. And that will grow you as well. That's a growth step for some of us. That, that requires, um, you know, a bit of tenacity and so on to take that risk. But create your clientele. Become that advocate. And I've made some other notes. And because there is a lot of specialization happening in coaching. So you might want to think, well, what is it I'm going to, what is going to be the byproduct? And we'll probably be talking about that some more, but what is going to be the byproduct of someone working with me? And get over, get, get over having to be an expert in everything. That, that paralyzed me initially. And I, I, I will just share a little bit more about what I experienced and what I've seen uh, others who just kind of, you know, threw themselves out there is that um, I had a background. My background was I would had a business and I'd also had an executive uh, position in a large national organization. And so what I did is I leveraged those two things, but I will tell you there was a lot I didn't have. And I, for example, even though I'd, I'd done those things, I'd never really worked with a CEO. And I remember I, I worked, I have worked with a number of CEOs. And at first I thought, well, what, what am I going to offer them? And yet remember, remember the coach approach. Remember to be curious. Remember you have those skills. And one tiny little extra piece here is that I had one person, a CEO of a large organization I was working with, who contacted me in the middle, it was 2008, so it's a little while ago, but it was a, the stock market had crashed, and uh, he was heading to a board meeting. And he literally, he had an appointment with me, I got on the phone, uh, we were on the phone at that time, and he literally said, and here he is, uh, he said, I don't know what to do. It was that bad, right? I do not know what to do. And I, I thought, well, I don't know either. <laughs> I didn't know what to do either. But I fell, I fell back. I, I used those fantastic coaching skills that I had developed and that I had learned to bring it out of him and kind of put myself in the shoes as best as I could in that situation and he left after 15 minutes because he only could talk to me for 15 minutes and off he went. That is worth its weight in gold to leaders and, and not every, or whoever is going through a particular crisis. Don't minimize your value. Don't minimize your value that what you're bringing is a safe place for someone who has no other place that they can do this in to talk to and uh, to to share the dilemma and come up with a quick action plan of some sort that they can go out there and that they can move forward all right I'll be quiet now no I love it um, thank you Allison you bring such a richness I love it um, mm. Sandra if I can get you to yes give yourself time Allison mm. you started talking about this it's that place of mm. this will take time um, and as much as some of us are like, okay, let's go, we want to add value, that can happen. And, um, you know, whether it's a, as you're, re as you're listening through this and you're saying, you know what, I'd love to do this. I really need some education. I need some, I need some backing here. Um, you know, as Marion says, uh, kind of complete a training program, an uh, accredited coach training program, a co accredited uh, coach specific uh, training hours that we'll talk about even as coach, coaching out of the box, a program like coaching out of the box. You need time to do that. You need time to, um, you know, practice and read and, and get your voice as a coach. There's also a practice of selling yourself when we start talking about you not being a um, not being a secret one of the wonderful things that you know allison is i've taken from allison talking about her vast experience is the practice of taking a coach approach to selling whenever you're talking to someone whenever you're talking about that networking of well here's what i do is how do you ask them the questions how do you how do you start doing that in your voice this takes time um you know 
crafting your story. What is your unique selling point um, as a coach? Crafting that. Here's, here's materials. Um, or if it's just saying, you know what, I got this coaching thing, cool. I got all this awesome. I just don't have the business. I may not have these. I don't know how to do accounting. Um, it's that give yourself time to get some of those skills. So it's that education piece. Um, and or when it comes to accreditation, it's that time is not wasted. That time is an investment. And, um, you know, so you know, it's like underline, give yourself that time and balance that with some need to move forward um, to say, OK, I have to move to my results. And that's why going back to what does success look like to you is so important um, to balance that. So um, I will move on to the next one, which <laughs> I do love. Practice, 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 practice. Um, not only is the practice of coaching an element of coach training programs, it's an element especially of the credential process of how do you practice? Um, are, you, are you hearing your own voice? Are you using you know, some of the new skills? Are you finding that place where questions are really comfortable to you? It is also a place to get your name out. Like Allison talks about, I've done it as well. You know, it's that pro bono place, the, hey, you know, let's get some clients, cool. Um, here's a reduced rate or no rate in order to practice, in order to practice, uh, you know, how to give, you know, your package, um, how to do, you know, the actual coaching pieces. Of, like I talk about how to sell yourself and how to practice your elevator speech of what kind of coaching do you do and what have your clients seen as a result. Um, the ICF is, is a wonderful program, is a peer-to-peer -peer coaching program where you go on, on, onto their website and they talk about, um, you know, they have a program where you can coach another coach um, and have that peer coaching support where you coach them, they coach you. Um, not only does that allow for practice and again, you know, to hear different types of coaching conversations that could come into that chair, it also, you know, if you're going through a credential, you're going for your credential, can um, count against those hours that you will need, that practice hour requirement that you need for the ICF. Um, the, say the last strategy, the big strategy is those strength, that strength piece. This is all about your strengths. Identify them. Maybe uncomfortable for some to say, I don't want to humble brag. What are my... Um, and necessary, necessary, if you cannot articulate your strengths, how, or and how, how is someone going to say, that's what, that's what a strength is. So again, it's that becoming comfortable with, with talking about your strengths, identifying them, ask anyone, ask others, whether it's those around you, um, whether it's, you know, your own coach, whether it's a mentor, um, your clients. Um, in that sense of referral place, the what are my strengths? Can you articulate the strengths? You talk about, Allison talked about that byproduct of people working with you, that impact of people working with you. Ask them about the value. Then you start being like, okay, not only is it crafting my own message, but again, you don't stay a secret. You can tell people. Um, and this is also based on that strength-based coaching approach of let's start with your strengths. How do you leverage them? What are you really good at? Um, what works for you, um, start there and then talk about that, you know, how can those strengths and your combination of experience and your combination of, of education and certification and all of the combinations of the uniqueness that you bring, how does that serve and how does that support others? Um, so that, um, as and with any business, this is about, you know, this isn't about pretending you're a business owner and putting on this coat. And this is about who you are and looking at those strengths and saying, now, how do I use them? How do I use them in service to someone else? Um, and, you know, not, not <sighs> doubt the value that you're bringing. Um, you're those creative spa or those spaces that many of you have been in as a, you know, if you've experienced coaching, those spaces of moving, having a safe space where someone helps um, ask questions so you can move from, one, from where you are to where you want to be. As I move into the, you know, who, a bit more about how coaching out of the box can, and I'm not going to move into it, Allison's, um, but as we move into how coaching out of the box can support you, as you've been going through these strategies, as, we've been, as you've been listening and you're saying, 
here's the area I need to focus on. Oh, I, I think I need help here. I need support here. Um, I will turn it over to Allison to talk about who we are. Well, at coaching our oh, before we go, before we go, yeah, I, I, do it. Go ahead. No, yes. I was going to call you in anyway. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, and, and I want to go back. I want to go back to the other slide for a sec. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I, and I want to I, I want to uh, say a bit more about this because obviously when we put on these webinars, we like to get, let you get to have an experience of us, take some of the, our programs if they fit for you, and so on. And we're going to tell you about that in a minute. But I want to talk about one of the things that it's lifestyle too. What is the lifestyle that you're wanting to create? What what is it that will be a byproduct? Because for me, when I got into coaching, and it's still the case now, it was I love the idea of working with individuals and to and supporting them and getting you know creating the success that they wanted for themselves. I mean, I just love that. I was fa I'm fascinated by people. I was always curious, and so on. Um, but but I will be, I'll, I will tell you, I'll tell you the other side of it. It was a lifestyle. For me, it was lifestyle. I had worked in an organization, and I'm not saying working in an organization is fantastic too, but for me, I was wanting to create a lifestyle that could fit with my life and that would uh, give me stimulation, excitement. It would be interesting. I would, I would be interacting with different, um, different types of organizations, different types of people, and also having a life as well and one part of that was I love to travel and traveling uh, if I uh, for me what it allowed me to create a lifestyle where if I had internet and phone or whatever access I could be anywhere and have flexibility with my hours now that didn't happen overnight and for some of you that may not be the case and by the way I want to also remind you, any of you who are working in an organization and you are uh, either delivering coaching uh, now or you're hoping to document your story because those stories will add value when you're going out there and maybe securing contracts with other organizations or working with other people in organizations. I just want to, I just want to mention that. And, and another piece, of, and this is going back to an earlier webinar that um, uh, I, I was speaking to, uh, a woman, uh, no, it was actually a man said, well, how do you, how do you do that scares me about taking risks? Because I was talking about take some risks. And, and Rosa spoke to that as well. I mean, don't be wild about it. Although I will say be wilder than you might think <laughs> because that's what's going to be the being a safe coach and, and just kind of, you know, riding the line, ain't going to cut it. You've got, you've got to make a difference. You, you've got to, you've got to really support those people move, moving farther, faster, easier, quicker than they would have without a coach. So just, so the risk part, just a tip. If you haven't, you don't already know it. I hated the idea of taking risks with a client, but I knew that I had to. So where I'm going with this is when you feel like there's just something you want to really zero in on with them and, or ask them a question and you're feeling a bit nervous about, pay attention to that. It's always good. But condition it. Say, hey, I'm not sure I got this right. I'm not sure if I'm going down the right path. I'm going to take a bit of a risk here. Can I take a bit of a risk? Get their permission and then barrel in with it. And if it's not right, oh, well, it'll, you'll find a way to wherever it is right. And that's the same with taking a risk in securing internally or externally clients for yourself, people to work with. Um, I think that's, uh, I just wanted to mention that because this whole coaching game is really about you and your growth and what you're prepared to do within yourself to stand to stand up, to take those risks, to grow yourself. And so it's, it's about who you are and are becoming. It's really so much of it is about that. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that. I also wanted to mention, as I can see where, Rosa, did I 
did that trigger any? I'm not that it's supposed to trigger anything. I'm just I'm just paying attention to the time too. So it no, it triggered me to write notes. I always learn. Um. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, okay. Um, the, 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 this whole coaching thing for me was a risk. I sitting here today and and this coaching out of the box and all of that. I never in a million years had this in my plan. This this has evolved over over some time, but. Um, it's successful and we have, I'm just filling you in on who we are. We, we're getting to some other, uh, some other important information too. Um, but we, we've worked with organizations internationally. Oh, and you know, back to this, making it easy for people to do business with you. When I got into coaching, I recognized I had to make it easy for people to reach me, to get, to get um, a website and, and all of that sort of thing. Anyway, we, we work with loads of people in all kinds of different organizations as well as what we do for individuals who are, who are achieving or going for certification. I want to also let Sandra jump in now and sh uh, share a little bit too. Of course. Well, I just wanted to let you guys know that wherever you are in your coaching journey, Coaching Out of the Box can help. Um, whether you are brand new to coaching and you're looking just to kind of dip your toes into the water to see what it's all about, if you're looking for your credential, if your credential's up for renewal and you're looking for CCEs to put towards that, if you're building your coaching practice, uh, we can help you with that now as well. And also if you want to become a coaching educator. So please feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to discuss any solutions with you. And what is next? Well, we have um, is starting soon. Um, I would like to highlight our Building a Successful Coaching Practice program um, because it does tie in so well to this webinar. Um, that will be starting on January 15th. Brand new program, chock full of so many different tools and resources for you. If you're looking to get started and build your coaching practice and have a little bit of accountability behind it, this will be a great program for you. Um, as a special thank you for registering for this webinar as well, we will be providing you with a 30% off coupon code um, towards the registration of that program. So I'll be including that in the follow-up email that you will receive after this. And I will reach out with your questions. Mm -hmm. Do, does anybody have any questions now? Feel free to, to jump on, have a chat with us. And, uh, you know, it, it's interesting as you as you go through all of the things, it's it's wonderful that it's like wherever you are in this journey, as you're reading through this, as you're as you're listening to our webinar, it's that this might work. OK, I'm thinking this through of what does success look like and how will this work for me? You know, whether you saw something on the slide um, or read something as you get the slides back or you just have a question. When Sandra puts her name up there and says, call me, she actually means it. Um, so she, you know, can help with those questions. If you don't have them now, she schedule that time. Think, um, have that, you know, partner that has the expertise. Um, and now, you know, I don't see any questions come on the chat, but I do have kind of a question out. Um, not sure how to ask this. How would someone restart a coaching business? Um, I am I'm going to make an assumption about the word restart. And then, you know, I'll, I'll ask again, um, Allison and Sandra. Um, I'm assuming you mean you had one and then you wanted to, uh, it's kind of like dormant or put on hold and you wanted to restart. Um, I would, you know, after going back to work 10 years in the business, leverage. Um, one, I, I, if what's coming to mind really quick for me is, um, because you've done it before, it's what, you know, what, what has worked, um, like if you know those questions of what worked 10 years, uh, you know, in those, in what worked for you, how do you leverage where you are right now? Not only what you've done in your story, the resources you're using and the people you're doing it with. Um, and, and just start, um, <laughs> it's like kind of start. Allison, I'm, I'm curious um, when you say good question as well. Yeah, great question. I'm curious as to, you know, given that you've seen some of this, what, uh, what information oh. you'd love to share? Oh, yes, uh, all the time. Come and go, you come and go, you stop and you start, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And, and I, I've seen that many, many times. You have got so much experience. Mm -hmm. List out what you have gone through and what you could leverage as a coach for one. Take our coaching, you know, take our Build a Successful Coaching Business uh, class. 
for for one. Or maybe take a uh, a coaching course that'll get you reignited into into coaching again. I mean that's another one. And I'm wondering, um, I'm wondering what do you need to let go of? Oh, I love that. What do you need to let go of in order to move forward with this? What what's getting in the way of you doing this? I'm not saying there is. I'm just, that's a great question. And I, by the way, I love that you asked it because mm-hmm. this is very, very, uh, uh, this comes up for others as well. Mm-hmm. But what do you need to let go of and what are you really, really good at? Um, yeah. And there you go. The heartbreak of having, and now you're, you're, you're oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I get it. Okay. And move forward and way to go. Mm-hmm. You're already, you're already in it. Uh, because y- you've expressed it here, and that is hugely important. And what are the next three steps, three steps that you could take? Because I can guarantee whatever you've experienced, a lot of others could value with tremendously from. Three step or three steps. Oh, I like that. Yeah, three steps. <laughs> Three steps, three steps. <laughs> Mary, you also have that comment of you prefer to build collaboration because you've worked as a solo coach for 25 years and want the partnerships. Wow. Again, that creating, you know, there is a, a great point in there of someone starting their coaching practice or moving forward with a coaching practice. Sometimes it's a solitary, whether it's a coaching practice or any kind of other business, sometimes it's a solitary feeling. So, you know, would you prefer to build those collaborations? I would ask what it would take for you to say, I will. I will build those collaborations to surround yourself with others who are going through that um, and have those partnerships. And then you see some of the synergies that happen in those partnerships. So I wish you the best of luck. Um, Anyone else want to share what they're walking away with as a result of today's webinar? Throw it onto the, onto the chat. Um, Oh, (laughs) perfect. Um, well, Jim, I sent a note to you. Jim was saying he's going for his PCC, um, and oh. we wish you the best of luck. Uh, <laughs> great, love to hear yeah. that you're a great fan. Um, <laughs> um, so anyone else want to share um, or any kind of, you know, want to ah. share what they're walking away with? Um, or did we miss anything, Allison or Sandra? Um, well, I'm just seeing I'm I'm just seeing some of the comments. And by the way, I may sound somewhat dynamic, and I may just barrel out like this, but I can assure you, I've had many whimpering moments. Even now, still do. But look at maybe in one week, even quantify it. What's one bold thing that you could you know to target to take a step with? Whether it's phoning somebody, reconnecting there, whatever. Oldness is, uh, has, has, has power in it, mm-hmm. and, uh, and boldness is different to everybody. Mm-hmm. So, uh, oh, Joanne's saying don't be, be a secret, right? Yeah, yeah, you can't, you know, hiding, hiding is not going it, to, it, it's just not going to happen. Uh, it won't happen unless you, unless you get out there and make it happen. And remember, the more you do that, the more you'll build that traction. And so for that question about restarting, one step um, and get a coach. Yeah. Get a coach who can mentor you through that too. That, I, that would be my other recommendation. And Allison, I want to address something you had said when you said, you know, you have those kind of whimpering moments as anyone who has any kind of business does. And yeah. you'll see that I think the two things that come out um, with Allison and I would encourage you to do that. One is her passion for coaching that comes out and it kind of fuels her. And the other is the answer to the question that many of us coaches use of who's going to support you. Sure, identify those steps, what is success, and who will support you along the way and getting those people around you, whether it's a coach, whether it's a mentor, whether it's, you know, just a bunch of people around you to kind of say, okay, rah, 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 go, will allow you to kind of be in those moments where you say, why am I doing this even after 10 years, 20 years, um, you know, ride the passion and, you know, identify and go with the support. So I wanted to use that as an opportunity. Great. Okay. Well, I think we're done. I think we're done. It, it looks like we've just about hit the very top of the hour. Sandra, is there anything to add? 
Just thank you all so much for joining us today. Uh, keep your eye out for the follow-up email. Um, the slides and the link to the recording as well as that coupon code will be in there for you. And um, reach out at any time. We're always happy to help. Bye, everybody. Thanks, all. Bye. Thanks. Bye.